Microsoft Teams is a cornerstone of the tools available for at-home learning in Leon County Schools, and there's lots of great training out there uh, on all the different features. Uh, but I wanted to put together a kind of a quicker tutorial on the most important features, uh, accessing assignments, uh, getting into the team chat for the classroom, where you'll be able to find out what's happening uh, for the week in your class, and chatting and, and having meetings with your teacher. The first step of using Microsoft Teams is to get it installed on your computer or device uh, or to log into it through ClassLink. There's another video accessing Microsoft Teams that you can watch uh, if you need a review on how to do that. Uh, once you have installed or loaded Microsoft Teams, just open the icon for it and you should be taken to this view that shows all of your different teams that you're a part of. A team is like a class. You could have a team for a club um, or other uh, group uh, that you're a part of at school as well. You should have teams which show up in these boxes for every course that you are enrolled in. Um, so in elementary school, you'd have one for every subject plus the special areas like um, art, music, PE, the homeroom. Um, in secondary, there are teams that basically follow your course schedule. Those sync from Focus, which is our student information system. Um, you also may be a part of, a, of an additional team, like a club um, or something that a teacher might have added you to. Uh, and so I'll be using this sample class that I created to walk you through the most important features of Teams. So once you click on your class, uh, you'll have you'll go straight to the posts area, which is a communication area just for your class. And your teacher could start conversations. You could start a conversation. So if you need uh, some help with something, you might come in and type in there and ask for help from your teacher. But you have to understand that this section is visible by anybody in the team. So that would be your teacher, but also all of your classmates. So if there's something that is a little more um, sensitive, you might not want to post it here. We'll look later at how we can chat directly with our teacher. Um, so if I'm in here typing um, that I need uh, some help knowing what page the assignment is on, um, the teacher or any other student could come along and type back to me and post their reply. The posts area also is kind of a message board of everything else that's happened in the team. So if a new assignment was, was assigned or um, any activity in the team, that is an activity feed for the whole entire team. The next section is files, which is a space where teachers can post uh, files that they need their students to be able to reference, like a syllabus maybe is a good example. Um, and students can just click on the file right there in the file section and it opens right inside of Teams. They don't have to go out into some other program um, and then when they're done they can just close that file out and they're right back in their team. The next important area is the assignments tab. Not every teacher will be using Teams for their assignments, um, but if your teacher is using that area you would visit the assignments section to access assignments that have been released to you uh, and work on them up until their due date. So you have a title and directions and then if your teacher distributed a file to you, uh, you can open that file, work on it, and then turn it in. So I'm going to open this sample worksheet that was assigned. Um, and this is a Word document uh, and it opens in a preview uh, right there inside of Teams. And so um, you can use the immersive reader which would read it back to you and you also have the edit document function. Um, if you need all the formatting tools, you could edit it in the desktop version of Word, uh, but if, if not, if you're just kind of typing on it, um, you can edit it right there in the browser which keeps it right inside of Teams and lets you edit it right there. So you can see all the tools that are available. We do have basic formatting options even in the online version of Word. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly complete this worksheet and then we'll see how we can save it and uh, turn it back into the teacher. This is your copy of the file that they attached to the assignment. So I'm just going to uh, complete that worksheet real quick.
So once you've completed an assignment and you've checked over it and you're ready to go, um, you can close it. You want to make sure it says saved. It saves as you go, but as long as it says saved, you can close it right there and you're still right there in Teams. Your work is done and you can turn it in. You could hold on to it and come turn it in later if you need to keep working on it. Um, but then the turn in button kind of animates to let you know that it successfully turned that into your teacher. Um, so uh, we'll go back to the post tab, but that's kind of how we uh, interact with the rest of the class. Stay on top of what has been assigned and turn those assignments in if your teacher is using that feature. The other really important thing about Teams is that it is our platform for communicating between teachers and students uh, kind of in real time. For example, when teachers are having their office hours and you need help with an assignment, you're going to want to look on the left-hand side. We were in the Teams uh, section of Microsoft Teams, um, but you're going to want to switch over to the chat feature. So you may notice that it's not there in your sidebar, um, but you can click the three dots to open the menu to access other features and click the chat icon over there. So that's how we access the, the chat or the real one-to-one -one communication area of Teams. Um, and you'll notice that the chat area uh, mentions having private conversations. But I do think it's important to point out what they mean by private here. Um, it's private in the sense that other students aren't going to be reading your conversations. But every chat here, um, whether it's between two students or a student and a teacher, every chat in Microsoft Teams is logged. Uh, in our school's um, system that is required by Florida law um, and that's to help uh, keep students safe. So uh, it, it's important to understand that you know these are not chats that, that won't be able to be accessed by school administrators if, there, if there's ever a need for that. Um, so it's important to keep the chats very focused on um, academic needs uh, and that's what that chat is there for. To start a new chat you'll just go up to the new chat button up at the very top and uh, then type in the name of your teacher to connect with them. Uh, it's, it's that simple. You've, you've connected with them and you can just start typing your message. So students uh, would probably use this uh, as definitely during teachers' office hours if they have questions that they need help with. Uh, but also, you know, if their teachers aren't there um, you know, at their office hours, they could send a message that their teacher could come back and answer later. Uh, different teachers might have a kind of a different workflow. So it's very important that students are uh, paying attention to uh, kind of the structure that the teacher has put in place and following the teacher's expectations. Some teachers may prefer emails uh, or some may prefer chat. Uh, but if the teacher's signed in, uh, and you can tell because they'll have a little green check mark next to their picture when you connect with them, they may respond right away. So sometimes the chat is all that's necessary to answer the, the student's question. Um, but Teams also supports uh, doing a video or audio call uh, that also supports showing different visuals uh, if, the, if that's necessary to answer the student's questions. So when the teacher initiates the call, a notification will pop up and the student can choose whether to join that with their video camera on or to join that meeting with just voice. Uh, and, and then it would just be more like a phone call. So this is an example of a voice call right now, uh, but the student does have the option to adjust the whether the video is on or off or whether the audio is on or off using the toolbar at the bottom of the chat. Um, another important button on the toolbar is the share icon, which gives the student the ability to share their screen with the teacher, uh, to share like a PowerPoint or Word document from their OneDrive, or to share a collaborative whiteboard. So that's really useful if the student's needing help uh, understanding something they already have pulled up on their screen, they need to demonstrate that to their teacher. Teachers also have the ability to uh, do show a lot of different uh, video inputs and files and things so they might choose to show uh, their camera uh, and have that have it become a video call at least on one side they may share their screen uh, if they have a, a document up or a, a part of their screen that they want to talk over with the student and uh, show and as have that as a visual um, or they may uh, show a document camera so teachers uh, we'll use this to varying degrees, but it's a great way to be able to kind of display information and talk about it at the same time. 
And when the student and teacher are done meeting, uh, either one of them can just hit the Hangout button and that ends the meeting. So that's the basics of uh, how to use Microsoft Teams to communicate with your class, turn in assignments, uh, and chat with the teacher, uh, text or video and audio. Another important question that a lot of students have is, okay, what if I've done my work on paper, I printed it out or I wrote it on notebook paper, uh, can I turn that into Teams somehow? And so that is what I'll cover in the next video. Um, the OneDrive app is perfect for that. It makes it really easy. Uh, so check that video out if you have that question. Thanks for watching.